iOS 18 was officially announced today. It absolutely blew my mind with the amount of customization features you can do on your iPhone. We have new features that we've been waiting for for over a decade. And honestly, it's one of the best updates to iOS that I've ever seen. And I'm excited to share 18 new ways that you can customize your iPhone in iOS 18. Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. Right now, iOS 18 is only in a beta release. It's in the developer beta program that you can get it. So all you have to do is sign up for that, it's free. Once you get iOS 18 on your device, make sure you back up your iCloud so that you have the device if anything goes wrong. Betas can get really buggy and messed up, so do this at your own discretion. And you're also gonna wanna make sure that you have a compatible device. It goes from the iPhone 15 Pro Max all the way back until the iPhone SC, second generation, so just make sure by this list your device is compatible. But if you're ready, go ahead and hit install, and now you should be running iOS 18. And we're gonna get right into it with a bunch of customization features. And with iOS 18, you do get four new wallpapers in the wallpaper setting. So if I long press the home screen, hit the plus icon, I scroll down and I'll see iOS 18 and there's four wallpapers to choose from. We'll select one of them. And so you get four different styles of pink, yellow, azure, and purple. Really nice. Now you'll notice by holding this down at the bottom, the two toggles that you can select from the camera and the flashlight they are now changeable and customizable in iOS 18. So if I delete the camera right here, I'll have a plus icon that I can select and it'll allow me to look at all of the different options of controls that I can choose from. I can search for a control or I can just add something. We can do it randomly for this video and that looks pretty good. Once you're done, just hit add. You can customize your home screen as needed, and then we are done with those two settings. Really cool, I like that you can change it now and have a lot of fun with that. I'm sure there'll be a really awesome shortcuts that people come up with. Steven Robles, I'm expecting an awesome video from you. Now, another thing you can do on the home screen is you can actually move an app anywhere on the home screen without restrictions. If I long press the home screen to get my apps into jiggle mode, I can slide it over and it will be in wherever I put it and it won't do that annoying thing where it slides everything over. It really can just be wherever you want on the home screen, which is just amazing. It's a feature we've been waiting for. I'm pretty sure all the way back since like jailbreak days, probably wanted to do this since I was like 17 years old. So maybe even longer than jailbreak. Another really cool thing you can do with your home screen setup is if you long press the home screen again, you have an edit action here and usually you just see widgets, but now you have add widget and customize. And if you click on customize, you can actually adjust the appearance of your apps. So there's an automatic, which will turn from light mode to dark mode, depending on the time of day. There's also a dark mode. And if you tap on that, it changes your apps into a dark mode, which is sick. There's light mode, which is just normal. And then there's also this tinted, which is really cool. And if I tap on that, it'll adjust the apps to the color of my wallpaper to match it. And it has these two color hue toggles to choose from. So if you do the top row, you can do it as like blue or purple, whatever color you want, and slide it over to make it either really vibrant or really light. One of the sickest things that we've gotten in iOS, and I know Android users are gonna say we've had this forever, and I agree, it's long overdue, it's annoying, and the fact that I can customize my home screen like this in a matter of seconds, uh, it's amazing. Going through the long shortcuts way of using a custom app icon is terrible, and I probably won't ever be using that again. I think this is sufficient and really good. Another thing you can do on this part is you can change your apps to a large app. And what that does is this is another feature people have been wanting for a while is it removes the app name from the app. So under all of these, you can see like mail, TV, but if you hit large, it removes the app name, which is pretty cool. If I long press again to edit and I add widget, 
I can see that my widgets are also in a different color as well, the one that I already selected, which is awesome. So if I go to edit and add widget and I scroll all the way down to let's say the weather app, I can actually tap on it and it'll give me the normal options. But if I hit add widget, you'll notice that there's a little kind of scrolly thing. So if you wanna just slide it over, you can slide it to the right and make it bigger. So it'll go to a medium widget. And if you wanna make it a large widget, you just slide it down and you make it a large widget. And you can actually from here as well, customize the widget and you'll see there's four toggles of app, small, medium, and large widget. So if you tap one of them, it'll change it to the size. And if you tap another one, it'll change it to the size, which is really convenient and just much easier to customize the screen. I don't know what took Apple so long, but I, I mean, they've made it so restrictive. Now having just this is incredible. Now, if I go to my settings, there's a really nice new setting for battery. And a lot of people really care about their battery health and battery charging and stuff like that. And they actually moved up battery to be higher up in the settings, which I think people see it as a priority. But if you tap on battery, you'll notice that there's battery health, which is normal right now for me. But if I click on charging, you'll see that the charging limit has changed from just 80% to all the way to 85, 90, 95, and 100%. So in iOS 17, it was either 80 or 100, but now you can do kind of different amounts, which is a pretty nice customization. Another setting that is really nice is if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you get the action button. If you click on action button in your iPhone 15, there's the option of controls. And if you tap on the control, very similar to what we'll get into with Control Center, you have different controls that you can select. And to me, a really convenient one is, because I misplace it all the time, is the Apple TV remote. And so just having this action for the Apple TV remote is really, really convenient. And I will just use that. Now, Control Center is completely new and really revamped and much more, I would say, just robust. You don't even have to go to settings anymore. So if you just go to Control Center, you have a few different options to select from that just make the experience of using Control Center so much better. So right up at the top right, you have a power off switch. So you don't actually have to just hold and press the power button and the volume up switch anymore. You can actually just press this and it'll shut off your device. And really cool, if I tap on the plus icon, I can add different controls into my control center just from right here. This right here, I can go and search for different controls and select any one of these randomly right now. I'm not really configuring it. I'm just doing it for the video. So if I select this one, that will now live there. And very similar to what we saw with widgets, I can adjust the size of the control to make it pop out more or make one smaller. And this is just incredible customization for Control Center. You also have controls for your music, if music's playing or movies playing or something like that. And then below that, you get all of your main settings like airplane mode, airdrop, Wi-Fi. You don't really ever have to be in settings anymore. And even if you try to, it tells you to go there. You can't even do it in settings really. And then you also have a fourth page of where you can add controls. So with shortcuts and other apps that are gonna be implementing this because Apple did release an API kit for this, this will be really cool to see what other apps use for Control Center. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge Apple Notes user and my go-to, everything really that I write down is in Apple Notes. And this is actually a feature I've wanted for a really long time is just being able to change the font color in Apple Notes. So right here I have kind of the script outline for this video and it's all in black text. But if I hit on the little A here and open it up, you'll see you have your normal formatting, but over to the right side, you have a dot that's a color. Right now I have it on mint, but if I select that color or change it to another color, it will use that color for my font in Apple Notes, which I just think is really cool because Sometimes when you're taking notes, you want something to stand out a little bit more. I really like Apple's color choices here. You have purple, pink, orange, mint, and blue. And I went with mint for this video and it just looks really clean and a really nice added feature while note taking. 
Another feature that you'll be able to add in iOS 18 that is really nice for customizing your phone just the way you want it, and something that really annoys me in the Photos app is seeing screenshots. And now you can actually remove those screenshots as an option in iOS 18. So if you go into Photos and you hit on the little up and down arrow, there's an option of view options. And if you tap on it and go kind of to the bottom, you'll see show screenshots. And if you unselect that, it'll remove all the screenshots from within your Photos app. One of the coolest features that I've seen that really Apple didn't discuss and I checked on it and it's here is you can actually add a reminder like from the reminders app into Apple calendars from Apple calendars. And so I've really always wanted these apps to kind of speak to each other more and be a little bit more intuitive. And so if you go into the calendar and you hit the plus icon, there's an option of reminder and you can add your reminder right here. So I'll just add a reminder here. And that reminder will now live in calendar and Apple reminders, which is just fantastic. And within calendar, I can check off that reminder, which is super satisfying. Another thing you can do with calendar is there's a couple new views that you can customize. So you have single day and multi-day and list. And I think multi-day is gonna be really nice not just for iOS, but iPad OS as well. And speaking of iPad OS, a lot of the features that I discuss, if not all of them that I discuss in this video outside of like the action button one is going to be on the iPad. And most of them, you might want to just check the version, but I have the new M2 iPad Air and it looks fantastic with being able to customize it and do everything that you can do with the iPhone. And it's just awesome. And lastly, you can actually set up Face ID on an individual app basis. So if I long press on Apple Notes, I can tap on require Face ID and it'll ask that do I wanna get permission for Face ID and require Face ID for opening this app. And if I tap on require Face ID and open it, Face ID is gonna pop up and I'll be able to open the app. So that is 18 new ways you can customize your iPhone in iOS 18. I'm super pumped for iOS 18. I know that there's gonna be a ton of new content that I'll be bringing to you guys. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like these customizations, make sure to hit the like button and comment below what was your favorite feature that was announced at WWDC. Maybe it wasn't even in this video. And I can do a follow-up video if you want me to talk about some other customization items in iOS 18. So as always guys, thanks for watching. God bless, and I will see you on the next video.